Hey friends, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about DC Superheroes United, mainly the new update that just came up today. Uh, it's Wednesday, June 26th, uh, and they just dropped a new update into our laps that uh, kind of had me scratching my head and a lot of people scratching their heads. And I just wanted to go over that with you today as we continue to sit here and uh, make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. So as usual off the top, if you enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button, do all that fun stuff. And if you're a fantasy fan or you know somebody who is, maybe throw some love this guy's way because I am also a self-published fantasy author. And my novels, We Were Wizards, are available on Amazon right now. This is the first one, the purple one, and the next book in the series is this gray one, and you can pick that up as well. They come in three different formats. They're called We Were Wizards. So check them out if you love wizards, and you love magic, and you love goblins, and people shooting arrows at other people. One of the characters in this book even has a boomerang. There are no boomerangs in this one, so I apologize in advance. But check it out if you like that sort of thing. All right, let's cut to the chase and talk about DC Superheroes United update number 12. Now I have it over here on another screen, so I'm just going to read through what they said. Uh, this came out today at 5.03 p.m., so it's a couple hours old by the time I'm recording this. New pics of the core box and an exciting news, but hush hush. We'll get to that a little bit later. But as we scroll down, there are some really nice high quality pictures of the miniatures. Uh, that according uh, to the update, Todd Patrickwin from Imagine All the Meeple, which is a great name, um, took some cool pics of the board game and that they will share those on the social media channel in the next few days. Awesome. There's a close-up of Darkseid where we can see the rock in his skin and all that stuff. So as we scroll past those, then we get to the very bottom where it's almost like an addendum. I, I thought I was missing something. I'm like, oh, this is the news, but it's here. Apparently, DC Superheroes United is getting a retail exclusive core box. Here's what it says. As done in previous projects, and we'll go over that too, we are happy to announce that DC Superheroes United will also have a direct-to-retail core box. The reveal of the exact contents of this box will have to wait until after the crowdfunding campaign, but it will offer both variations of characters seen in the campaign as well as brand new ones. For now, all we can reveal is that it will be based on a beloved DC graphic novel. This box will not be offered on GameFound and is expected to hit retail before pledges are shipped out as a way of offering players an early taste of DC Superheroes United in lieu of shipping the campaign in two waves. Stay tuned for more details about this box. There's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? So, in a nutshell, there's a direct-to-retail core box that is not part of the campaign, and we're not even going to see what's in the box until after the crowdfunding campaign. And that's an important word that I glossed over the first time. The contents of the box will have to wait until after the crowdfunding campaign. This is launching July, which means the campaign will probably end mid to late August, which is hopefully when some people here in Canada and the States will start getting their multiverse pledges. But that means that we won't find out what's in this core box until at least September. Now, having said that, we go on here, it says it will offer both variations of characters seen in the campaign as well as brand new ones. Again, there's a word here that's super important, and the first time I read it, I glossed over it, so I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Variations of characters seen in the campaign. When I first read this, I thought variations of characters seen in the core box. That was where my head went at first, and it's completely not that. It's character seen in the campaign. That makes a lot more sense. For now, all we can reveal is that it will be based on a beloved DC graphic novel. So, people are, in the game found comments, comparing this to Spider-Geddon in the way that it was a retail exclusive core box that wasn't part of the multiverse campaign. And I mostly agree with that. I think Spider-Geddon is the closest thing to that. Um, Spider-Geddon was a little bit more unique, though, because it was such a strange outlier. It gave you a bunch of characters, but 
how do I put this? They were such niche characters because nine out of the 10 of them had not been represented in Marvel United before, right? So yes, it's hitting retail, but the average Joe walking down that retail thing is like, oh, finally, a core box that gives me Scarlet Spider. Huzzah! That was a box full of Spider-Man deep cuts, is what it was. It was full of Spider-Man deep cuts. It kind of was cashing in on the Spider-Verse movies, but also not, because it didn't offer an alternate Miles. It didn't have an alternate Spider-Gwen. Like, it was really just its own little thing. So even though Spider-Geddon is the closest thing to this, it's still not quite what this seems to be. Because this is saying variations of characters seen in the campaign. The only variation that is in that Spider-Geddon box, at least in my opinion, is the symbiote Spider-Man. Because it's a, a skin, right? It's an alternate variation slash skin of vanilla Spider-Man. But this sounds like something totally different. And variations are something that I think we as fans can all expect to see here because DC, way more than Marvel, is all about putting different people in the same costume, right? There's like, there's been, what, seven flashes? So the inevitable question is, what is the beloved DC graphic novel that this is supposedly going to be based off of? And that tells us something already, though. That tells us that this campaign is going to follow in the footsteps of the multiverse campaign, where multiverse, the first two Marvel United campaigns were really about just getting you characters. Like, here they are, here's more characters. Whereas Multiverse was about adapting stories from the comics and the boxes were themed around the stories, not around the characters in the box. So, you know, instead of the box being called Inhumans, it was called War of Kings because it was about a story. Maximum Carnage, Civil War, etc. Uh, and that allowed them to do some variants on season one characters that kind of needed a tune-up anyway. So this looks like this is going the same route, that... We can expect a lot of our expansion boxes to be story specific, story focused, and not necessarily character focused. So with that being said, a beloved DC graphic novel, I'm not the first person to point this out. I'm sure other people in the chat have seen this, but Simon likes to get a little dad jokey and put some little hidden codes and things into all of their um, their messages and their updates. And I mean, it it's not exactly subtle when they say in the update title, Exciting news, but hush, hush. And both of the words hush are capitalized. I think it's safe to say that might be the story they're adapting. Batman is just a household face, right? You put, because this is, this is going to be a core box. This is going to be a retail core box. So you put Batman anything in retail, people know, right? It's not like Spider-Geddon, I mean, Spider-Man is is a, a really household face too, but Spider-Man himself was not really in that box unless you're a Spider-Man fan, right? You know, the average parent would pass that by and be like, oh, that's Spider-Man, but he's wearing a dark costume. I don't know what that is. I'm going to pass that by now and go to the hardware section. But Batman always kind of looks like Batman. So this being a hush box, if that's the case, would mean we would get... Maybe an alternate Batman. I think Catwoman plays a huge part in Hush. And if I remember right, I think she wears a different costume in it, so we might get an alternate Catwoman. I also believe my favorite Batman villain, the Riddler, played a huge part in Hush. Again, I might be wrong, because it's been a long time since I've read Batman Hush. But if that is the case, we might get an alternate Riddler as well. Um... Variations of characters seen in the campaign is really, it's such an open-ended statement. And the reason why my head initially, when I read this, the reason why I thought alternate characters from the core box was because the core box has a lot of characters that could be done differently very easily. I know a lot of people were saying that this dark side is a very specific take on dark side and some people were saying, you know, it'd be cool to see a different take on Darkseid, which I think we still might get, but I think that's still his own box. I mean, there's a ton of different Batman, like that's a given. Lex Luthor is uh, a character who I think a lot of people were kind of hoping to see as an anti-hero. So we might end up with a heroic Lex, a box with a heroic Lex, which brings me to the second theory of what this box might be. If it's not Hush, it might be something like 
injustice, which makes a lot of sense. Injustice is full of sort of prime, top drawer, easily recognizable household names in the DC universe. And it's very, very popular. I mean, Injustice was so popular, they made games out of it. It's got its own animated movie, I think. And, and like they've, Injustice has kind of become a brand unto itself, this Elseworlds thing that we hold up on a pedestal next to the real thing because it's just, it's so beloved. Even the Zack Snyder movies were kind of knocking on the door of Injustice in some of those flash forward scenes. And they were gonna go in that direction before uh, that movie franchise kind of fizzled out. So even though Hush sounds like a fun bet, I think Injustice is the more likely of the two because that would give us an evil Superman, which is kind of a thing that DC people love to ruminate on. And the idea of having to fight Superman as a villain is terrifying. So that would be just a fun challenge. It would also give us a lot of cool variations of just these basic characters that we'll almost definitely see in this campaign, like Lex Luthor and Batman, like Green Arrow, like Harley Quinn. And the reason why I think this works the best is because in terms of the DC world, Injustice is the story that I think it reminds me the most of Marvel Civil War. And what I mean by that is this. I know that sounds crazy because they're very much not alike. But when you look at the Civil War box that Marvel United gave us, right? If they had adapted Civil War in that box much more faithfully as the way it was in the comics, it would have been a lot more characters that we had already had in the game, right? Captain America and Iron Man, sure, but like Spider-Man was huge in Civil War, Daredevil was huge in Civil War, Mr. Fantastic, I believe. If they had been drawing from comics primarily, it would have been a box full of repeat characters. And we know Simon didn't want to do that. That's why we got the box as it is, where we have some cool people like Kate Bishop and Tigra that we still were waiting to get our hands on. Injustice is similar. Because in Justice, the key players in that story, as far as I know, because I haven't read it, let me make that a caveat, I have not read Injustice, but the key players in that story are people like Superman, Batman, Lex Luthor, people who we can expect to see in this core box and in, throughout the rest of the campaign. So this seems like a safe bet because it's going to be full of alternates. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to give the retail people, the people who are not aware of this game found thing at all, it's going to give them a chance to look at the shelf and say, oh, I can purchase Superman and Batman and Lex Luthor and whatever, all these characters I know, and I can have that in a box because I don't know this game found exists. But it can also give us a chance to have this alternate story like Civil War if we want to opt in and get that. And that has nothing to do with the campaign. So it's not like we're spending money on this campaign on a box that's going to be full of repeat characters, right? It's not like this $500 uh, all-in pledge that we would make is weighing on us like, ugh, you know, 40 of those dollars are for this box where it's just another Batman and another Superman. I wish it was just more different characters. So I think that makes the most sense just from, based on what we read here and on a business standpoint and on a giving the backers the best bang for their buck standpoint. And man, that was hard to say. I'm not saying that 10 times fast. Uh, it just seems right. Injustice seems right. So I would put my, even though the hush hush thing, it really feels on the nose. I, I don't think it's subtle enough. I want to see Hush, absolutely. But I think Injustice just has a better chance of ticking all the right boxes for everybody involved. It's a win-win-win. The backers win. The people who only see this game in retail win. Simon wins, right? And if we, the backers, because if you're watching this, you're probably thinking of backing. If the backers really want the Injustice story adapted into the United system, they'll get to buy it on the shelf at, you know, whatever price Walmart or Target sees fit. And they won't have to worry about all those repeat characters bogging down the money they have to put down on a pledge on GameFound. So hush hush, great clue, but my money's on injustice. At least that's how I'm feeling. But let me know in the comments below what you think about this uh, this update, how it made you feel. Uh, I wasn't even planning on doing a video today, but that just came up and there was so much to chew on that I really felt like we should do a video about it together. 
so that'll be all for me for tonight. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all here next time for whatever comes next in the Master Plan.